that 80 to 90 percent of marine creatures participate in bioluminescence. What I'm going to talk to you about today is about bigger fish rot, which makes this possible for some of these marine creatures, the gram negative bacteria. The organism that has bigger fish rot living inside of it, in a symbiotic relationship, is the Hawaiian bobtail squid, which is this little squid that spends most of its day tucked away in the sand. At nighttime, when the moonlight is out, it comes out to hunt. And in knee deep water, light penetrates very easily through the surface. So it is very efficient that it has this bioluminescent organism living inside of it. What's interesting is that it uses its bioluminescence not to attract prey, not to scare off predators, but rather as an invisibility cloak to hide itself in the moonlight. What it's doing here is it has in its mantle, under it, a sac with the protein, um, well with the proteins being excreted, which create bioluminescence, of the Virgo fish rat. At the top of its mantle, it has a light sensing organ. This light sensing organ can detect the intensity of moonlight that hits the squid. And using a, a sort of lid or a flap, it can also control the intensity of light that comes out from its underside. By doing this, that little squid is able to hide its shadow from predators. So hunting in moonlight, you can see how it's a very important adaptation. Thanks. How this works, Vigro fisheri exists in high cell densities inside of the squid. When it is in low cell densities, or when you grow it in a lab on a petri dish by itself, it won't produce this bioluminescence. That's because it's going to excrete this chemical here. And when there's enough of this chemical in high cell densities, you see bioluminescence. So I started to study it by using a sequence of one of its proteins. And I did find a match in the Alibrivio, also known as Vibrio genus. And surprisingly, looking at the phylogenetic tree, I saw that it has it as an ancestor, riboflavin synthase. What does riboflavin have anything to do with this? Again, from looking at the conserved domains, and we see the superfamily of riboflavin. And here we see the domain that's conserved as room P. So I took the riboflavin synthase, I blasted it on the NCBI database, and I have its fastest sequence, which I put together on tea coffee to a line. I found a 98% match. And here, to visualize it graphically more easily, I put it onto WebLogo. On WebLogo, you can see the capital letters that exist individually in each amino acid segment is the amino acids that they share. So what is the relationship between riboflavin and Alibiru fisherized yellow fluorescent protein. Well, apparently, they share the same active site location. So now I want to localize the YFP. I'm looking at it, and it looks like it exists entirely outside of the cell. There is no signal P, and here we see that it exists outside in the focus analysis. In P fam, we see again the conserved domain with a very low E value close to zero. And it is again the room finding site. In the hidden Markov model, you can see the family, uh, the family uh, visualization model, the proteins. So what is the function of the protein in Vibrio fissure that exists inside the Hawaiian bobtail squid? Well, these marine creatures can produce various assortments of light, yellow, blue, green, and apparently yellow is its most useful color since it has grown together with the bobtail squid to produce an adaptation that helps it survive better than others in this environment. Thank you so much, Professor Nowick, for this class, and thank you everyone for, for being here with us.
lab negative vector that's on that P2 job? Right. Okay. I agree with myself. Yeah. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah, if you're interested in Culture. doing that, do you take biotechnology? Who's in biotech right now? So it's my major. I'm looking for the class, so. Oh, have you, you signed up for it yet? Yeah, I did. You uh, signed up. Okay. So I couldn't find it. Did you go to the office, the bio office? 